Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Almighty Allah the entirely merciful and especially merciful dear viewers across the globe i greet you with the greeting that spreads peace assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace be unto you amin amin it's time to share with each other and to remind each other of something that is beautifully done by the muslims alhamdulillah and we are among them but just to remind everybody that if you notice usually when muslims speak or when muslims begin an act uh, or doing a project uh, regardless of how big or small the project is they begin usually by thanking allah and by ending by thanking allah wow it's so so beautiful so on the top of everything allah is all the hierarchy of priorities in their minds on the top of this hierarchy is thanking allah praising allah subhanahu and that's why even at the end of whatever whenever they want to end they would say that praise be to allah praise for what they have success, succeeded to do they don't attribute it to themselves they attribute it to their creator because they are full aware that they are nothing without the support of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the beginning is thanking allah and the ending is thanking allah not only thanking but praising and thanking uh, which is really a great a great blessing that we thank allah for to guide us to do this millions of people around you around me they don't know how to do that they don't do they don't thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they may thank they may convince themselves that they are thanking their own god and there is no god as islam says that there is no other god except almighty allah and that's why we all the time this concept of oneness of allah is very important to be brought up in in our minds in our hearts in our eyes in front of all of us so it directs all our life alhamdulillah and this is part of the meaning of being a muslim submitting ourselves to almighty allah today i am going to cover this ayah which is very essential as the other ayat all of us will focus on this it's ayah number 257 ayah number 257 chapter that's called al baqarah all of us know that it's chapter number 2 this ayah tells us this a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem allahu waliyul ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min adh-dhulumati ila an-nur wal ladina kafaru awliya'uhum at-taghut yukhrijunahum min an-nur ila adh-dhulumati ulaika ashab an-nar hum fiha khalidun this can roughly be translated as allah is the wali allah is the protector allah is the guardian of those who believe so anyone who believes he has a guardian and the guardian is one his name is allah subhanahu he protects what does he do he brings them out from darkness into light but but as for those who disbelieve their awliya their supporters their helpers are at-taghut what's at-taghut it's a very essential concept that needs to be understood that means false deities false 
leaders, false gods. Even we don't say gods because, because Allah has no other god. There is no other god. They imagine that they are the ones to help them. And in fact, those taghut, false deities, they bring them out from light into darkness. Those are the dwellers of the fire. And they will abide therein forever. So now, part of our understanding of this verse to say that who we try to answer this question. Now we know the answer, or at least some of us know the answer. The question is, who are the dwellers of hellfire? Who are they? Can you define them? If you are in this context and you are asked this question by some people around you, who are the dwellers of hellfire? Do you know them? Perhaps the only people who are able to answer this question are the Muslims. They would say that the dwellers of hellfires are the ones who obey other deities. The ones who obey others than Allah. Anyone who takes the leadership of this person or this deity or this leader or this are called taghut. What do these taghut or these deities do? And why are they dwellers of hellfire? They are dwellers of hellfire because their leaders take them from light, from guidance, light of Islam and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to darkness, to the unknown, to ignorance. But the beauty of Arabic language it's called zulumat in a plural form because there are many forms of darknesses. Whereas the word light is mentioned in the singular form because there is only one light, there is only one guidance, and there are many forms versus many forms of darknesses and deviations. So here, a nur, and here on the left hand, there are many forms of darknesses, of, we don't say it in English, darknesses, the plural, but in Arabic it is in the plural form. And this is, again, a kind of superiority of Arabic language. Because in our, if you translate it to put it in other languages, it will be difficult to find plural for every word. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in Arabic because it's in Arabic. That's why Arabic was selected to be the carrier and the conveyor of the message in the, of the last final message of the Quran. Also in the same ayah you would find you can deduce a lot of beautiful things. Allah waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-zulumat ila al-nur. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ So again, the word wali is mentioned in the singular form with Allah because there is only one guidance which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who guides us. So Allah waliyu الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So we have one wali, we have one protector whose name is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas to the darkness we have many, many other leaders. 
It is very significant when you go deep into the semantic of the language and see the meaning of this. Whenever you talk about Allah throughout the entire Quran, 600 pages or more, you find all the time a reference to Allah as one, 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 one. You never find it in a form of a plural. When, whereas you talk about ignorance or darkness or any kind of deviation, you will find taghut is a plural form, although it is used in a plural and singular form. Taghut, any other one that you worship other than Allah is called taghut. Whether it is, he is a human, whether it is a statue, whether it is an idol, all these together constitute this concept of taghut, which is a very important concept that you explain it to any believer, to anyone, any human being that who does not know Allah, so you all the time. Other than Allah, besides Allah, anything else is called taghut. If you follow this or this or this or this, or these laws or these laws or these guidelines or these things, or this, this is taghut. To be on the safe time, to be on the safe side, you only follow guidelines from Almighty Allah. So this is the difference between the two categories. First of all, the last and final word, which is a very important thing, which is really another focus that all of us need to focus on when we deal with any ayah. See the ending of it. The ending of an ayah is very important. The important of the first thing in the ayah is also important. So here the first word is Allah. The ending word here, it tells us Khalidun. That means they are forever. Where? In hellfire. So it really should scare us when we know the meaning. Nobody does or loves, he wants to be there. No, neither you nor me, any one of the audience, anyone who has some sort of reasoning, why would I select to be a dweller of hellfire? Of course, you would say that I don't want to be there. So now here, if you know, that really this is the ending. So try to search for the reasons what brought those people to be in hellfire forever. All the time, ask yourself this question. Am I one of those? No, I am not. If you find yourself are approaching closer, be able to avoid, avoid the track, avoid the left track, avoid the wrong track. Avoid the incorrect ways. And this tells you that. And this is the guidance of Allah. To be on the safe side. Say that I would obey Almighty Allah. I have heard nothing about any other God. There is no other God. He is the only God. That's why I worship him and home him alone. Not him and someone else. Not him and the one that had been worshipped by my father or my mother if they are not believers. But anyway, this is a quality of the believers. Allahu waliyu ladina amanu. Who is their guardian? Who is their protector of the believers? Is Allah. All the leftovers of humans are not protected by Almighty Allah. They are protected by the false deities that can do nothing. We know that the false deities, the false gods can do nothing in this world for them. Yet, because of their ignorance, because of the lack of knowledge or the lack of 
true knowledge. It's not just knowledge, it's lack of true and authentic knowledge. Many people have some sort of superficial knowledge, which is very dangerous. It has to be authentic and verified, not only one time, but all the time, whenever you have an opportunity, try to check this kind of knowledge, this kind of information, because a lot of people are continuously misinformed. Misinformed by some books, misinformed by some media, misinformed by some of their friends, some of the... We are misinformed. We live in a world that has a lot of misinformation. And now we have huge amounts of knowledge around us everywhere. And that's why we need to do this filtration from time to time to guarantee that what we get to our minds, what we get to our hearts is purely authentic. And all the time we know the rule, whenever in doubt, leave it out until we verify it by asking the scholars of knowledge, we would not approach it. Uh, we would have question marks on it, and we can do this process as many as we can by just asking questions and by just reading authentic information and authentic knowledge in the books that are available everywhere. And thanks to the technology nowadays, we have a lot of things available on the internet. So it makes our life easier in verifying these issues that we don't know or we may not know. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.